Thanks, Bill Haywatt. I'm Mark Hershon, your every other episode host of Succotash Shut-In, the Soundcast Stimulus Package. I switch off with Tyson Saner, who had some great clips last show, Epi 206, including Full Court Chat with Dave Schilling, Sensibly Cynical, and New Player Has Joined. You can still grab it or any of our past episodes at our home site, SuckatashShow.com, as well as Apple Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, the Laughable app, and all over the web. This, however, is episode 207. And I also have a lovely late spring harvest of comedy soundcast clips for your listening pleasure. Today we'll be hearing from Alonzo Bowden, who's paying attention. Black men can't jump in Hollywood. Day drinking with Gary and Elliot and the brilliant idiots. This episode is brought to you by our two long-term sponsors, Henderson's Pants, featuring their Wake Island, abbreviated trousers, and TrumpPoetry.com, the website featuring the biting political verse by our very own engineer and producer, Mr. Joe Polino. And, time permitting, we're going to bring back an old feature of the show at the very end, the Tweet Sack. Before we get into the clips, I want you to know that I know this is a very, very weird time, both around the world and here in the United States. It could be the weirdest time ever, maybe, but it certainly is in my lifetime. It's one of the reasons that Tyson and I decided to start producing more rather than less editions of this show. He's a relatively new father. I'm a relatively old man. Going out into the streets is a piss poor option for either of us at this point, but we are here for you. Whether that's the you that's also sheltering in place and just trying to stay sane, or that's the you who's been wronged by 400 years of prejudice, degradation, and violence, which is still being perpetrated to this day. Regardless of where you fall on the 2020 apocalypse scale, Succotash is doing what we can to try to bring a little light and levity into your life by introducing you to comedy soundcasts that you may not be aware of, or that you may have heard of but have not yet had a chance to check out. In the scheme of things, it may not be much. It's definitely not standing nose-to-nose -nose with police and riot gear, armed with military hardware, and it's not offering amazing frontline early responder or incredible unswerving medical care from healthcare personnel who keep putting their lives on the line without hesitation to help others. But it is what we can do, for free and on a weekly basis, in hopes of making your mental and spiritual load just a little lighter as we move, as a people, to a brighter tomorrow. And if you ever need to reach either me or Tyson, you can email either of us, Mark or Tyson, at SuckatashShow.com. All right. How about some clips? First up is a clip from a soundcast I reviewed just this past week for Vulture.com as part of their This Week in Comedy podcast column. You can find me there almost every week talking about somebody. This time it was Alonzo Bowden who's paying attention. Alonzo is a very funny comic who you may recall from his winning of one of the seasons of NBC's Last Comic Standing back in the day. His weekly soundcast features him turning his comedic wit and straightforward wisdom on the news. Last week, he found the news so full of news that he just tackled as many headlines as he could without getting too deep on any one story. Our clip features the host calling several folks on what he terms their, quote, bullshit apologies, unquote. In Virginia, another one of these incel, incel is the, uh, celibate guys, um, um, who they, get, they can't get laid and they're, they're all on Reddit and they have these groups, um, and they hate women. So some idiot, uh, named Karini blew his hand off, which when you're incel and you blow your hand off, what you're saying is there goes my girlfriend anyway. He blew his hand off. He went to the hospital. He claimed it was a lawnmower accident. The people in the hospital knew he was lying. They called the FBI. The FBI went to his house, found bomb making materials, rusty nails that would be uh, shrapnel in a bomb, etc., and some note that he was going to blow up some hot cheerleaders at the mall. So they got him. They caught him, which is good. Just again, just another side headline. Uh, in, in all of this madness. Let's move to sports. Roger Goodell, commissioner of the NFL, admits the NFL should have listened to players on protests. Yet somehow, in his bullshit apology speech, in his bullshit what we should have done speech, didn't mention Colin Kaepernick, the NFL player who led the protest, the first one to take a knee. He didn't mention him. 
just gave the bullshit apology that we should perhaps listen to players in their protests over police brutality and racism and all this. What is this racism you speak of? We've never heard of it. Yes, we run a league where the majority of players are black, but we never heard of this this racism thing. So that there was a video done um, with Patrick Mahomes, Saquon Bailey, Michael Thomas, Odell Beckham Jr., Deshaun Watson, and so on that they posted. And somehow Goodell was like, wow, uh, mm, we're wrong. We're going to have to apologize. Yeah, another bullshit apology. Um, LeBron James, who you know I love. You know I love LeBron on and off the court. Called out Laura Ingram on her racism because Drew Brees made a statement about the protests and about the flag and so on. And, and he was checked immediately. First of all, that these protests and the, the Colin Kaepernick protests, etc., have nothing to do with the flag. They've said it from the beginning in plain English. I used to do a joke about this. They're speaking English. It's the only language I speak. And I understood every word. When they said this is about police brutality against black people, not against the flag, not against America or any of that police brutality. But anyway, Drew Brees spoke out about it. Then I think Drew Brees had one of those come to God, find religion moments and realized like, wait a minute on the field. I am protected. The only protection I have on the field is from large black men. Perhaps I should shut the fuck up. So, and I've met Drew Brees. I did an event with him. He seemed like a nice guy. I'm sure he is a nice guy, but he was just so wrong. So he came out with his bullshit apology and took his apology to the next level. And I always call it a bullshit apology because when it's the day after you did something like you, 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 you're not apologizing, you're trying to clean up. But anyway, he talked about how he was wrong and he even went so far as to write an open letter and talk to Trump about how this isn't about the flag. This is about police brutality, et cetera, et cetera, to which Trump said you shouldn't have apologized because Trump is actually not protected by large black men. He's protected by armed white men. So he doesn't give a shit. You can catch Alonzo Bowden, who's paying attention at its home site on all things as well as most of the usual streamy and downloady places on the web. And you'll find a link to my vulture.com review of his soundcast up on our show blog at SuccotashShow.com. Charlemagne the God and Andrew Schultz are the brilliant idiots. Charlemagne's commentary is unfiltered and from the heart. He's been described as, quote, hip-hop's Howard Stern, unquote. You may know him from The Breakfast Club, the hit syndicated morning radio show. Zooming in on the co-host position, that's Andrew, who's a stand-up comic from New York, but I, I don't really know that much more about him. His bio on their home site says he thinks bios are lame. Okay, well... That's how I was going to find out about you, but so be it. These guys can be kind of goofy, but they're always funny, or almost always. Understandably, one can't expect to get a lot of lightheartedness out of comedy soundcasts right now that are tuned into what's happening in this country. I think it's important to hear how Charlemagne and Andrew break down what fucked up idiocy happened to result in Breonna Taylor getting gunned down in her home by the Louisville Metro Police Department just after midnight on March 13th. Let's get into some Positively Brilliant and what a fucking idiot, man. What did you see this week that was Positively Brilliant? Huh, that was Positively Brilliant. Oh, you know what I saw that was Positively Brilliant? What the Democratic senators did with the kente cloth and taking a knee? Get the fuck out of here. Nah, dead ass. Why was that brilliant? Because they out-trumped Trump. No, they didn't. They did. Yeah, I think they actually pissed their base off. Listen, they- we all we don't like Democrats to pander. That white condo shit they pulled yeah. with fucking Nancy Pelosi and Chuck yep. Schumer and all of them. Yep. It's like, I don't care about that. I care about policies and legislation. Yes, that's, that's true. That's what I care about. That's true. But the reason Trump is president is because he found a way to dominate the conversation. In the same way, Takashi 69 is a famous rapper. He found a way to dominate the conversation, right? They understand the value of attention. And for a whole few days... Everybody was memeing and focusing solely on that picture. So, yeah, they knew it was pandering. Yeah, they knew it was stupid. But they knew for two or three days they could take all the attention away from Trump. And with Trump doesn't have attention, he has no power. That motherfucker is like – attention is like the sun for him. That gives him all his power. So they took that shit away from him 
And if they can continue doing it with goofy ass antics like that, you're good to go. The Democrat nah, supporters bro. hate Trump so much, they're not going to vote for him no matter what the Democrats do. You got to back it up with policy, savvy, bro. It was savvy marketing. Trump used to back his shit up with policy. Even if it was the most simple shit like build the wall. Yeah. Or the Mexicans are taking jobs from you. Yeah. So we got we to gotta fucking get them out of the country. He, he still had some messaging in it. What like policy they, they, does the Democrats have? Like what? Po- what are their what policies? They, what, what they today? Uh, that day they had uh, released the um, Justice in Policing Act, which and banned. What is that? It, 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 I mean, it's a lot of stuff in it, but uh, some of the main things was it bans chokeholds that killed um, Eric Garner, not Eric Garner, uh, Floyd, George Floyd, George Floyd, George Floyd. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, it stopped no no knock drug entry. That's how Breonna Taylor got killed. So I mean, it has it, it. It was a good. It was a good law. It's a good comprehensive police reform bill. That Yo, they, they were not that they that they're trying to get passed, but the Senate's probably going to block it. The more I read about this Breonna Taylor story, the more absolutely ridiculous it is that there has not been any arrest made about this. It, it makes no sense. And this the is fact, crazy. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. And I, I put them in the what a fucking idiot category. First of all, you 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 raid the wrong house, right? Right. The person that they were looking for already was in jail, right? Yeah. But, but, but they give you the warrant for the wrong house, and you raid the house. The guy oh, they give you a warrant. They gave them a warrant for the wrong house. I didn't. Yes. Know that. Yeah. So they, gave they a, did go to the house that they thought they were supposed to go to. No. They went to the wrong house. But th- did they go to the house that was on the warrant? No. Oh, okay. So they went to the wrong house. Yeah, they went to the wrong house. Fucking so, idiots. They, they, they kick the door in. The boyfriend right. does what he's supposed to do. You sitting in your house in the middle of the night, you hear somebody kick the door in, you grab your motherfucking hammer, start blasting, right? He got arrested. His charges got dropped. I think his charges got dropped. I'm yeah, pretty sure his charges got dropped. And Breonna Taylor's dead. And when you look at the police report, they basically tried to cover the whole shit up. Yeah, they didn't they say that the body didn't get to the hospital or something like that? Yep. Yep. Son, this is crazy. Hey man, this is this America. one is the craziest, and this is the difference when you got a video. When you got a video, it makes it real. When there's no video, it's hearsay. I said the same thing. Like What'd I said the exact same thing. I said the exact same thing you said. I said the the, the reason Brianna Taylor is not getting the attention that uh, she should get is because there's no video. Like on Matt Aubrey, there was a video. Um, you know, George Floyd, there was a video. Mm. With with Brianna Taylor, there's no video. It's just hearsay, so you don't see how bad it is. You hear the nine one one call. But if we actually saw the police kicking the door in in the wrong house and then just lighting that place up, Yo, it'd, it'd be a total type of outrage. Where are all the animators at? Animate these fucking killings, bro. You need Animate deepfake? these killings. Give all give all the details in the animation and show what's going on. And people will pass that shit around, dude. I bet tri- they really will. You have all the information. You have what transpired before and you have what transpired after and how fucked up it is, how they try to cover it up. Yeah, but then people will just say, oh, they're exaggerating. They drop episodes weekly, and you can find the brilliant idiots on all of the usual sites, including SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more. It's time to pull on our pants, and by that I mean Henderson's pants, of course. Friends, summer is just around the corner, so you might be thinking to yourself, gosh, it's time to get out the suntan lotion, rubber thongs, and good old Bermuda shorts. Stop right there, Pilgrim. Did you know that every time you slip on a pair of their shorts, the British Protectorate of Bermuda receives a two-cent royalty? That's right, which is why Henderson's Pants, a loyal and legal corporate entity of these United States since 1896, is introducing their Wake Island abbreviated trousers, roomy and comfortable like the Bermuda shorts you've come to love, but with the freedom that comes from knowing you won't be helping out the subjects of our former British oppressors. The stylish Wake Island abbreviated trousers are named for the unincorporated tiny landmass in the North Pacific, which is a legal U.S. protectorate. Now, when those hot, sticky days of summer hit, slip on a pair of Henderson's Wake Island abbreviated trousers and go for a stroll on the beach, around the pool, or through the mall. 
Feel free to wear briefs, boxers, or nothing at all under your new snazzy and 100% American abbreviated trousers. Because, as a U.S. citizen, you have the right to stow your junk any way you choose. Originally designed for the U.S. Department of Immigration, Trout Farmers, and Dark CD Theaters, that's Henderson's Wake Island abbreviated trousers. Available wherever things you put your legs into are sold. And now back to more of Suckatash. Our next clip comes from a show that I've been a big fan of since they first hit the pod waves. Hosted by Jonathan Braylock, Jerry Milligan, and James III, Black Men Can't Jump in Hollywood is a comedy soundcast that has guests come in who are actors of color in the biz, and they review films through the lens of race and diversity issues. The episode from a couple of weeks back started out with a frank and somber lead-in about how the hosts were feeling about the unrest going on across the U.S. and the world, and they're feeling relevant to the Black Lives Matter movement. But in the spirit of The Show Must Go On, they welcome guest Niccolo Aid to examine the 1998 terrorism action thriller The Siege, starring Denzel Washington, Annette Bening, and Bruce Willis. Our clip is from their setup of that movie. Oh, sorry. That's right. We, we review films of leading black actors. We talk about them in the context of race and diversity in Hollywood. And today we are reviewing the film The Siege. Now, wait, what ta- what year did this movie come out? 1998. 1998. 1998. So, so a little bit of context. So The Siege is just very quickly. The Siege is about uh, an FBI agent uh, Denz- played by Denzel Washington um, teaming up with a CIA agent played by Annette Bening. Um, and they're investigating... Uh, this like bombing um that happens of a a, of a school bus um and throughout the course of the events it's like the end like the even though it's in the movie's title it doesn't happen until the very end um there is a military siege of new york city so the act the u.s army comes in to take over to try to find these uh these terrorist cells uh that they believe are in the city um so that's the concept of the movie. Now, the all, all the terrorists are uh, are are Muslim. They're yeah, all they're all Arab. Arab. And can I say one Arab. thing yeah. that the, the the geopolitics of this movie make no sense? Like you don't know where the terrorists are or where they're from. So the first guy they say is in Lebanon, but Lebanon doesn't look like that in the first scene where it's all sandy dunes. That looks like Africa or Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Lebanon does not look like that. And then they're like Wait, the guy when who, they, when it. When it opens, like the opening scene, they said they kidnapped the guy in Lebanon. That's not what Lebanon looks like. And then they're like, these guys are with or or, or Palestinian, and they're going to Lebanon and Iraq. But if you're in Palestine, you literally can't leave. I mean, that's the problem. That's what it is. None of these political things. And also, and also, (laughs) the guy that they, the guy that who who they who they kidnap in the beginning of the movie, very. And, yeah, well, yes, Asimov. Yes. But not, but not, wait, wait. Before Asimov, I'm like, talking about. Yo. I'm talking about the first scene. The first scene. Oh, that the first dude guy. Yeah. Looks like Osama. Like, I mean, they right. dressed him up to look like Osama, and like, I, I went, I was like, huh, that's so weird. He looks like Osama. And then I looked it up. And it was like, no, they were, tr- they were attempting to to, to make it because that was the clip from the Laden. beginning of the film too. The uh, who's the, at who's af he, is he not Afghani? Like, well, is Osama Afghani, bin Laden. Yeah. No, he's from Saudi Arabia, and then in the oh, 80s, he moved he to moved Afghanistan to when the CIA it. gave him weapons to fight the Russians. And then right. They, and then they <laughs> to took away the weapons, and then we had to invade again Afghanistan again. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so the geopolitics of this movie are crazy, but the thing is that the thing that is so fun, it's like, because we're watching this movie, uh, Tessa and I, my wife, and, and uh, <laughs> Tessa was like, Tessa was like, oh, wow, they made this movie, like, right after 9-11? I was like, no, they made this three years before 9-11. They made this movie right after the World Trade Center bombing. Yeah. Uh, Part one. Which, which the, you, you know, the one, like, the... 94. Yeah, it, 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 in the, the van, like, there was, like, mm-hmm. a van. All right. But, like, which was unsuccessful. But there was also, they talk about, um, they also talk about Oklahoma City, which of course has nothing to do. Right. At no, all. I actually, I actually heard something. Yeah, they had, so weird. They had protests from Arab groups, so they had to mention Oklahoma City bombing more. <laughs> and also, realistically, uh, there were well, it, there were no Arab terrorist attacks in the United States at that time. No, it's a wet dream. It's like a few in the future. 
the author of this was like, we'll be able to arrest everyone. I just, I can see it. So cool. well, this is why we'll I, get those Muslims. This movie, we'll get a black guy to it. arrest them. It'll be fine. Grab yourself some Black Men Can't Jump in Hollywood at every place you can think of. It'll let you download episodes of quality soundcasts. Bill is a cocktails and comedy soundcast. Day Drinking with Gary and Elliot features exceptional actor and improvisational comedian Gary Anthony Williams, as well as home mixologist Elliot Blake. They like to have celebrity friends drop by for a drink during the sane light of day, although the dropping by these days is virtual via Zoom, and they often have other friends in on the Zoom chat as well, just to make it into a party. Most recently, they welcomed stand-up comic Dan Adut, who has his own great foodie soundcast called Green Eggs and Dan. Our clip revolves around something he's been cooking up while quarantined at his parents' house, lamb brains. Be, be warned, Dan gets into some details here. So the other day, uh, I was looking at your Instagram uh, stories and you were cooking um, yeah. in your parents' kitchen, which we can, which we can also talk about. Uh, you, were, you were making brains. I was. I was making lamb brains, yeah. uh, which are yeah. the most delicious, one of the most delicious things that you can eat. If you get over the brain, the fact that you're eating a brain, uh-huh. yeah, it is almost has the, consi- it has a creamy, almost brie cheese mm. consistency. Uh, and it is, it actually, if you've ever had durian fruit, it has that kind of consistency. Hmm. But it's meaty. So imagine like a organy meaty brie cheese. Now, if that doesn't turn you on to eating brain, I don't know what will. I, I will well, say, I, go, in, in the early days of America, and you guys may have seen the same history special, they were finding all of these skeletons, mostly of young people and young women specifically, because when starvation hit, when the early settlers came here, uh, the white dudes, not the Indians who were already here, what they ate mostly was human, and what they ate was brain, mostly female brain. Come on. No, 100% true. Google it. Uh, I mean, right now, Melissa and Angela are are muted. They can Google early settlers brain eating. They ate a lot of freaking brain there. I don't want that in my Google history. No, they me had, neither. They had these saws. To, oh, but I'm just saying... <laughs> right now, you're talking about, oh, so creamy, and nah, 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 nah. you just one of them. Um, you nothing but a nasty, nasty well, mustachioed brain eater. I'll tell you this. Those basic brain-eating Puritans were not doing theirs with a saffron uh, sauce, which I was oh. my brain with. Oh, oh. well, yeah. now, now, I'm, now I'm interested. Yeah, yeah did so, they find saffron in them bones? <laughs> okay, you got me. <laughs> how did how did you get into how did so so brains? It's kind of I I know that actually there's a lot of cultures around that that will eat a fair you know will eat all sorts of things that we Americans find uh, weird like brains yeah. and and you know other other part pancreas that kind of stuff. How did you get into uh, how did you get into brain eating? You know, first of all, I, I, you're saying it like I'm a com- competitive brain eater. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping so you were. How many, com- seriously though, before you answer, how many competitions have you had eating brains? Six. And is it, is it one of those like watermelon eating hands behind the back? And you just go face <laughs> yeah. first into it? You go bobbing for brain. <laughs> They're just in a basket. In a, uh, no, I, you know, I got to say, I, I, I've always been a huge foodie and something about after a while, you just get a little tired of, chicken and beef and lamb and you just need to you just want to chase that high so you start going a little like okay i want to try liver and like oh that's cool i like that flavor or like kidney it's like even even though it might be a little off-putting at first it's different and it's wild and it's almost like bungee jumping for your senses so brain was something that i had as a kid my grandmother made it once in a blue moon but i was like i'd love to give this a shot and in cor- we're in quarantine and my parents get food from this random butcher and she was like they have you know we're just seeing what they have available she's like they have brain i was like get that brain and we, <laughs> so she brought it over we dressed up like puritans we did this whole role play <laughs> thing where i grabbed the brain out of my mom's head <laughs> <laughs> now um i found a recipe online of like a moroccan brain and uh uh it was uh it was cool man it, it i basically you just i don't know i don't know how much of a deep dive you want me to go on but as far as deep as you want to go yeah so i'd say if you guys listening 
want to try brain out, the best way to do it is cut the brain into like, um, let's say two inch squared pieces, like, like almost like a, like a chicken nugget. And, uh oh, oh, but I wish nuts. people could see Angela Harper has her <laughs> pen out right now. I think she's about to stab herself in the head. First of all, I didn't know chicken nuggets came in squares, but keep going, please. I have had the pleasure of doing some improv with Gary Anthony Williams over the years, and I love that guy. And I also have deep respect for talented mixologists, too, so I bet Elliot is an all right guy. Check out their day drinking soundcasts in places like Google Play, Spotify, the Laughable app, and more. All right, let's hear from our other sponsor, and then I'll be back with the Tweet Sack. This episode of Succotash is sponsored in part by TrumpPoetry.com, a chronological ode to a fake muse. Enjoy a rhyming spin on the news of the day every day, as well as over 500 archived daily verses thoroughly covering the White House, America, and the world with a sticky caramel coating that's impossible to remove. That's TrumpPoetry.com. Everything you need to know in rhyming couplets. Trump Poetry. I am going to close out this episode with a return to a custom I used to do a while ago called the tweet sack based on the idea of checking the mail sack to see if anyone wrote into the show. But since they never do, I like to use this time to see if we've gotten any messages on Twitter first and then thank those who at least mentioned or retweeted us. Now, I hope that yes, Tweety, you're still alive in there. Good to see you, buddy. Let me have a look in your sack. I did get a yell from at Peter KZ, an old friend, an improv student of mine, Peter Kim. Turns out that he's at a soundcast, the Ajuma show, that's got more than 130 episodes under its belt, and he never mentioned anything. I had to find out by having one of my fellow reviewers at Vulture.com cover his show. So I tweet shamed him about it and told him we'd soon be clipping it. Not in this episode, but soon. He tweeted back, thanks, Mark. You're the best. Davian Dent, host of the Strange Times show and friend of Succotash, gave us a shout for featuring Strange Times in Epi 204. Other than those couple of things, nothing much to report, so here's a rundown of the folks who at least mentioned at Succotash show in passing. I Shake My Head, Salty Language Pod, Ice in the Face, Super Pee Pee Time, Superhero Speak, GMY Drunks, Real Rats, the Bootleg Pod, Archer's Knock, Renegade Radio, Rock Show Online, The Lone Meatball, Kung Fu Drive-In, Caffeine Driven, The Whatnots, Pittsburgh Nerd, Joint Podcast, and Brody's Kitchen. All right, there it is then. Episode 207 is in the archives. Thanks for stopping by, downloading, streaming, or however you chose to experience Succotash Shut-In, the Soundcast Stimulus Package. Always a pleasure. Tyson Saner will be dropping Epi 208 next week with some more lovely Soundcast clippage for you. And I plan to return for Epi 209 with an unreleased pilot episode for a comedy Soundcast I wrote and produced called Sleeve Talkers, Adventures of the Third Detail. It's all about the overnight shift of the Secret Service at the White House and has some great guest voices on it. So until then, be good to each other and please pass the succotash. You've been listening to Succotash Shut In, the Soundcast Stimulus Package, with your host, Mark Hershon. Brought to you by Henderson's Pants, TrumpPoetry.com, and... Imagine your company's name right here. Find us on the web at SuccotashShow.com, on iTunes, on Stitcher, on iHeartRadio, on YouTube, on SoundCloud, on the (laughs) laughable app, and tattooed on your mother's rear end. You can hear us streaming and like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Succotash Show. Email us at marc at succotashshow.com. Or call into the Succotash Skype line at our toll call number 818-921-7212. You can also upload clips from your favorite comedy soundcast directly to us using our direct upload link at hightail.com slash u slash Succotash. 
Production of Suckatash is overseen by Joe Paulino through the auspices of Studio P. Sausalito, the home of the hit. Our hosts are Mark Hershon and Tyson Sainer. Our musical director is Scott Carvey. Our booth assistant is still Kenny Durgis. And until next time, I'm your loyal booth announcer, Bill Haywatt, reminding you to please wash your hands and pass the Suckatash. Goodbye. This has been a Succotash Patch production.